Hello, my Artrageous artists. I am so excited that you're here today. We are going to learn all about how to use color to create an amazing underwater seascape. That's right. If you've made landscapes before, it's kind of similar, but instead of drawing the land, we're going to go dive down deep into the coral reef and we're gonna learn all about the cool different types of coral, and then we're gonna use color to create our own amazing seascape. So, do you have your scuba gear ready? Your passport? Check, check. Because we are going to fly to Australia where the Great Barrier Reef is located. All right, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> We're not actually going to fly and go scuba diving, even though I do love scuba diving and I did get scuba dive certified. I would love to go to the Great Barrier Reef, but since we can't actually go today, instead we can use our imaginations. So, do you have your imagination? If you don't have your passport, you at least can use your imagination, right? <laughs> right? All right, let's try. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, now we're diving buddies, so that means we need to stay close to each other. But look at how beautiful it is. Oh my gosh. The fish are all these beautiful colors. The, the coral actually is one of the major marine biomes. Oh, is that a shark? None. Stay close, stay close. <gasps> Look at this. Oh, it looks like almost like hair flowing in the water. And I love the rich colors. We are going to learn all about color, but we want to take a really close look at this coral. At first, you might think it looks like rocks, but it's not. Did you know that coral is actually living organisms? These tiny little creatures called polyps. And they feed on algae. Oh, Hey, little buddy. <laughs> See that coral behind him? Oh, oh, scared me. <laughs> so coral is just amazing, and it is a wonderful place for us to learn all about the element of art color. Oh, we found Nemo. <laughs> I love all of the flowy lines. So coral reef, they have to live and grow in warm, shallow water. So you can find them all over the coastlines near the equator where it's warm. Because these organisms feed on algae, they need to be able to reach the sunlight in order to have food for them to grow. As the polyps die, they harden and more polyps can grow on top. So they keep adding and beautiful colors and shapes and designs. Isn't that amazing? So now that we've learned all about coral, let's dry off, head back to the art studio, and learn about color so that we can combine these to make our own amazing underwater seascape. All right, let's hop out. It's kind of cold anyway. I decided that I wanted to make my seascape a seussical seascape inspired by the amazing Dr. Seuss. He is one of the most famous authors of all time. And I'm sure you've seen his famous book, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. But did you know that he also wrote another book about the ocean and fish? It starts off with, I am Cat in the Hat, and I hear that you wish to go down to the sea and visit the fish. So please climb on board SS Undersea Glubber. It's made out of shark skin and very fine rubber. It will take us down deep, deep down under the sea. We will start at the top and go as deep as can be. If you've never seen this book, I highly recommend that you check it out. It is awesome. And I used it as inspiration for my undersea scape. Now that we know about the ocean and the coral reef, let's review what we understand about color. The color wheel is a tool that artists use whenever they're making an artwork so that they can understand and review color relationships. 
Everyone should definitely know the three primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. They can be used to make the three secondary colors, which are orange, green, and purple. But did you know that they're also warm and cool colors? Color is so powerful that it can actually affect your feelings. Have you ever heard of the saying, are you feeling blue? That means that sometimes blue can be a color associated with sadness, but it can also make you feel calm and serene, while yellow can enhance concentration, but can also be thought of as a happy or warm color. So, one side of the color wheel, we have yellow, orange, and red. Those are considered to be warm colors. The other side are the cool colors, like green, purple, and blue. Our goal is to use the warm and cool colors to create a seascape that has contrast. So we're going to use the warm colors for the coral and we're going to use the cool colors for the water. So step one is to grab a white sheet of paper and we're going to start with pencil first to draw the sand, the coral, and all of the shells and details at the bottom of the ocean first. It helps to draw a variety of coral and have a reference photo to look at to help you make them look realistic. The second step, number two, is to use warm colored oil pastels to color in your coral and as many parts of the bottom of the ocean using red, orange, and yellow. Now one group of colors that you don't see on the color wheel are neutral colors. Those are brown, black, white, and gray. We're going to use the neutral color brown to shade in the sand. If you're going to use oil pastel for this, a really fun technique is to outline the edges of the sand and then use your finger or a paper towel to blend the oil pastel into the space. Now the last step is to use the cool colors, starting with blue, to paint the ocean and waves in the background. I like to start with a technique called wet on wet, where I get a large paintbrush and I get the paper wet first with water so that when I dip my brush into the blue paint to paint the blue waves horizontally across my page, they will blend together and create lots of variety of cool colors. After I do the blue waves, then I fill in some purple in between. Then you can wash out your paintbrush and even add some green or seaweed or other cool colors. Optional but really fun step is to sprinkle a little bit of salt on the blue paint while it's still wet. And it almost looks like bubbles. I love how both of these drawings turned out and I hope you've enjoyed learning all about color and the coral reef.